Shameful Five. My brother just arrived, Heather B. Mm-hmm. I'll call him my brother because I think we're cut from the same cloth. He's a pillar to humanity. I feel it in the in his lyrics. I feel it in his representation, how he presents himself. He uses music. He uses poetry. He uses rap to spread a positive message of unity, um, also to make people aware of injustice, um, also to push equality-based uh, message through his uh, ways and actions. Mm-hmm. So righteous brother. You know how many people are chaining the station right now? Oh, man, that old... Not our citizens. Nah, not our citizens, man. Even if they disagree with you, they're going to hear you out. Yes, sir. Yes, we, man. We, we all understand that we come from different places. We come from different beliefs. We always, we're not always going to agree, but that's what civilization is supposed to be about. Yes, sir. Because that's what society is supposed to be about. I can respect your opinion. You know, even if I mm-hmm. disagree with it, I can respect you as a person. Mm-hmm. I think that's problem with probably the problems we have with this country and this division. Yes, sir. You know, because we're on opposite sides of the spectrum. But I can respect if Tracy G feels differently than I do. Yes, sir. You know, hmm, I want to hear where that comes from. Learn mm-hmm. more about mm-hmm. Tracy because I got to live around Tracy. She got to live around me. Yes, sir. And so you have always um, held yourself in, um, in a righteous format, in a humble way. And I always appreciated it. Brother Ali is back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, he's not going to do the five fingers of death today. <laughs> he's going to bring some life today. Mm. <laughs> How you been, sir? I'm very great. I'm doing really, really well. And I'm very happy to be here with you all. You, you, yeah. you got an uh, upcoming album, All the Beauty in the Whole Life. Yes, sir. Right? I've been concerned about you under this current administration. Mm. You know, and, um, you know, we've been having a lot of conversation about Im- immigration laws and, and how it affects uh, different citizens in our country, and particularly Muslims. Yeah. You know, what has your um, time been like in this country in the past few months? Hmm. Uh, well, this country has been um, suffering and dominating people for 500 years. Mm-hmm. And so they're just this, the focus shifts a little bit from time to time. But that's been one of the qualities of this country and one of its marking characteristics. Uh So people have suffered in this country and people have been targeted and, uh, you know, some people have been tortured so that other people can flourish. And uh, that's not a natural way of life. That's not a normal way of life. Nobody's ancestors live like that. Not, Not in Europe, not in Asia and certainly not in Africa. And so this is a new way of life that we're all struggling to adapt to. And one of the beautiful things about hip hop is that you know, black and brown people in this country have really been the the leaders in surviving with a lot of beauty, beauty and a lot of dignity and a lot of regality and a lot of just flyness and uh-huh, class uh-huh. and just being dope, you know. And that's I think that's why we all love hip hop and that's why people run to hip hop the way that they do. Uh-huh. Both the children of African ancestors and, and children of immigrants and also people who were who came here as Europeans. Uh, signing into the new world, like punching in to the new world, you know, Uh that everybody lost a whole lot of what it really means to be a human being. And we are reconnecting with it via culture. And you're one of the people that really exemplifies that. And you've been the, I would say, the guardian of this culture. Absolutely. No no better than nobody else. Uh And we really appreciate you for that. So when you say nice things about your brother, it means a lot to me. And it also makes me feel like a hypocrite because I know the times when I'm inconsistent, when I'm when I'm not those things. Yeah. But, you know, we try to be as our as our mentors see us. Uh-huh. Yeah. Man, shit. I'm the guardian of the culture, man. That's Absolutely. Jesus, Absolutely. Okay, but this is not about me, this is your interview. <laughs> All right. Uh <laughs> so I appreciate that. And and I will do my best to remain true to who I am. Man. I don't think you have a choice. Yeah, I, I don't think it's I, I in don't. your bones. You, I, yeah. I don't have a choice. Yeah, you you're our you're our uh, you're our leader, man, in this thing. I'm Absolutely. one of I'm one of few. I'm mm-hmm. one of many, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, um, has anyone in your family, and when I say your family, it doesn't have to be your blood relative, mm-hmm. just in your family, um, been affected by what we're seeing going on? Yeah, I mean, I, I've personally been affected. Um, one of the songs that I brought is about the fact that you know I do travel around the world, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, I'm I'm really frequently harassed at the border, and uh, my money was taken from me at one point by Department of Homeland Security. Uh, I've been detained and um, have been harassed and 
had people come to shows and they let me know that they're reading my email. You know, so if you have an email exchange with your buddy, uh, and you know, maybe I send, maybe I write something, and because I don't see well, I'll send it to people at Rhyme Stories. Like, hey, can you proofread this for me? And they'll say like, oh yeah, I took the apostrophe out of the word "its" because you didn't mean it belonging to it; you mean the other "its." I'm like, okay, cool. So then somebody will stop me, a border person will stop me, and I'll go in the office and they pull out a file and he's like, we're just talking. He's like, oh yeah, "its" with the apostrophe. Just slip that in there just to let me know. Like that was an email exchange I had two days ago. Just to let me know that my email is being read. Wow. But then my wife and my daughter are black Puerto Rican Muslims, the children of immigrants, you know. Uh -huh. um, so this is a, you know, this is a major thing for them. You know, my wife uh, is a, um, you know, sociology and um, social work, like a therapy student. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, she, her building uh, somebody, and she is one of, a very, a very small handful of uh, black students in this program that she's in. And she's the leader, like she's the, you know, honor society, uh -huh. like leading student, like teachers, a TA in all the classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And somebody wrote N word go home, you know what I'm saying, on the building, uh, like wow. right after Trump was elected. And I, wow. I for, forgive me for saying his name, right after that devil was elected wow. to be the representative of all the devilishment that we have, you know, the outward expression of what's going on inside us. So for me, the thing is to focus on beauty to focus on all the things that are being taken and to try to feed where we're being starved. Uh -huh. Because I was raised very well, and I'm still being raised very well, by people like yourself and Chuck D and Rakim, the people who are my mentors. Um, I mentioned before I sat down that the, the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was my teacher. Yeah. Minister Farrakhan is one of my teachers. Uh -huh. um, and you know, this beautiful community that we're a part of, I was given a lot, I was fed a lot, more than I could ever consume. And so, we have to share and we have to give, you know. And so many people that are touched by these great human beings, uh, it, it, you really become absolutely just overwhelmed uh -huh. with the reality of beauty and with, with who we were before all of this happened. Uh -huh. You get a sense that certain people speak. Like when you speak, uh, you're speaking not only for yourself, but you're speaking for, for mom and grandma and, and dad and all the people that, that who made you. But then also there are all of this, these, these you know thousands of years, God knows how many years of ancestry that's alive in you. Yeah. And your, your presence speaks of it. Uh -huh. And so you have no choice but to be who you are. Uh -huh. That's why when you say, I'm going to try to stay firm, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You literally are from that tradition of, uh -huh. you know, and I would be interested to know if you've ever been to West Africa to find out who your people are. My because sister. I guarantee you come from royalty. I guarantee it. Wow. That's what my sister tells me that all the time, Brother Ali. She mm. tells me she's a queen. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, she, she's gotta, it's got to be true. I want to ask you about some of the lyrics, um, and I'll tell you uh, where, where we trace my family roots back to. Mm. Um, but uh, I want to ask you about some of the lyrics in the song, Own, uh, Own Light. What hearts are for in our lyrical breakdown? I don't get it. What exactly don't you get? Breaking down the lyrics you may not understand. What the hell did you just say? It's the lyrical breakdown. I can break it down like whatever you want. Unsway in the morning. This song right here, What Hearts Are For, on light, What Hearts Are For. Um, I want you to tell me what you meant by this. You're not using your heart for what hearts are for. They've been trying to shut us down our whole life. I thank God for healing. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so that's a, actually a quote from one of my teachers, a man named Dr. Umar Farouk Abdullah, who's like a spiritual father to me. Um, one of these people that I talk about that has really taken me in and just loved me to the point that it's overwhelming. And, uh, you know, he talks about the heart and the reality that, you know, our hearts are here to be holders of light, receptacles of light. Uh -huh. So we're able to take in light and we're able to uh, reflect light and then we're able to shed light. And so, but that requires the heart to be in the right state. So the heart can't be, uh, you know, full of things like greed or envy or jealousy or can't be too full of its own ego. And then also the heart can't be veiled by false conceptions and false ideas. Uh -huh. So when you get the heart right, and that's the whole purpose of this whole joint, is like, how do I get this heart right? Because regardless of what these people are doing out here in the world, I'm the one that has to live with this heart. And yeah. I believe that I'm going back to the maker and the meaning of all of existence with this heart. And it will be me and this heart and the, the creator 
one on one, and this is the heart that I have to live with. So regardless of what these people are doing, I'm not interested in beating them at their own game. I'm not interested in out deviling the devil. We have to survive. Yeah, you know, so we have to navigate this thing, and we have to do it well. We have to try to live lives of dignity, but really, we have to try to live lives of meaning, uh-huh. because there are people that you know, people that everything has been taken away from them, but they're rich beyond belief in terms of who they are as human beings. Uh-huh. And th- those are the people I'm trying to learn from. Mm. And so, uh, and those are the people that brought me into hip hop, you know. I mean, I grew up listening to Heather B. Yeah. And, and KRS, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? And I remember uh, when I found out that you all were opening for Nelson Mandela. Mm-hmm. And I thought about, you know, my wife is from the Bronx. And I thought about, the, uh, about you coming from where you're coming from and Chris coming from a homeless shelter. So five years prior, this man is living in a homeless shelter. But he's, you know, he's trying to learn from the Harry Krishnas and he's going to the library every day. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And he's reclaiming his kingship, his, his, his kinghood, his uh-huh. royalty. You know what I'm saying? And then a few years later, when Nelson Mandela comes after all of his years of being in prison, I mean, who better? Who else can stand up in front of the crowd uh-huh. and really rock besides Kenny Parker, Heather B., Jamalski was mm-hmm. with y'all. Yeah. Like, so I was a kid, like, wow. seeing that. And I remember thinking, like, you know, these people are the ones that they're the only who else could receive Nelson Mandela? Mm-hmm. Who else could do that? Because you can't have some some, you know, rich dignitary that's never suffered receive Nelson Mandela. Their hearts aren't pre- prepared for that. Mm-hmm. They're not big enough for that. You know, so y'all had to receive Nelson Mandela. And I'm thinking, like, how many people had to approve of that? Like, who who okayed that? <laughs> who okayed, like, yeah, let KRS and them get on stage and just say whatever the hell they want. Yeah. Just yeah. give them mics and see what happens. Who approved Stadium. that? A lot yeah. did that. Uh-huh. There's no other way than God did that. Mm-hmm. God facilitates certain things when people are in a certain state and are animated by truth like that. And so that's what I grew up with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I also grew up with, you know, uh, Heavy D and all this. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I'm totally like, man, f- you know, fun is very important. Being fly is very important. It's part of being a human being. Uh-huh. All of that stuff. Sex is very important. All that other stuff. Very, very important. But all of this stuff is really animated by who we are and who we were before these people start messing with us. You you say... Um I love when this man speaks. Me you too. say in the lyrics of the song, Own Light, What Hearts Are For, mm. I, I jump in with both feet, nothing low key. You can find me where I'm supposed to be, where my folks be. If you listen very closely, you know who chose me. Nothing that I own owns me, and I'm so free. I remember being hungry, needing groceries, nighttime getting no sleep till my nose bleed. Got a message to the police. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm being lyrics, son. I'm being lyrics, son. So you got to go write well, I love to write a lot. How many... Uh... How many people can say this way rap? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but your, your lyrics love, are so love, powerful in this song, man. Uh, I want to play this song, and then and, and hopefully we got enough time to get you to do a couple of songs. Yes, sir. Mike Muse wants to ask you a quick question, too. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I'm curious about your song... Um, Uncle Goddamn Sam. Um, that's kind of when, and that was in 2007. That's when your money got frozen. Um, that's also too when you chose to go over to Iran and rap on Iranian television. This the song Uncle Sam Goddamn. I'm curious if you can contextualize what the song Uncle Sam Goddamn is, and then the decision point for you to go to Iranian television at a time when the U.S. and Iran was in a high discord amongst the two countries, as well as Iran is a very polarizing country within the Middle East is pivotal, and also too at the time. 2007 when Iran was racing for nuclear arms. Um, so I was wondering if you can kind of contextualize what the song is and your decision point to go there to do that song in Iran. Yes, sir. Thank you for your question, beloved. I appreciate it. So that song came out in 2007. Um, it's a it's Uncle Sam Goddamn is the title, and it's inspired by Nina Simone, Mississippi Goddamn. And so her song was talking about the, what was happening in Mississippi in the mid-60s when she put it out, or early 60s. Um, and mine was was uh, you know a reference to that talking about the the state of America in 2007. If you remember, we were still in the Bush years, and uh, he was you know bringing several wars in, into existence, uh, you know based on uh, uh, as a reaction to 9/11, and so that was really a song about the violent history of America and the underside of America, and that was a time when we were told to be extremely patriotic. There were you know American flags everywhere, and so we were being almost emotionally blackmailed to be patriotic and if we were being asked to buy on wholesale to everything that our government was doing because they said you have to do that because you're being attacked 
And so that was just a reminder that like, yeah, this is a beautiful place and the people here are beautiful beyond belief. But there also is a reality that has always been in this country, that this country was built on the genocide of the First Nations people. This country is built on literally the hands and backs of enslaved Africans and then also poor uh, immigrants who came from Europe, they also lost their culture mm -hmm. and they lost their history too. They don't know who they are. They don't know their, and even if they know where they came from, so like say they come from Poland or somewhere beautiful like that, if they go back to Poland, they got the same McDonald's, the same YouTube, the same Twitter, the, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's watching mm -hmm. Netflix. It's not like you're going to Poland and it's old school traditional Poland with their great grandmother's beliefs and all that culture and all that stuff. So that song was a response to that. I, when I went to Iran was about a year ago. And uh, my dear friend Amir Suleiman, who's the greatest poet living right now, um, he invited me to go. I went because it was a conference in Iran about the idea of Black Lives Matter. So I went there and I wasn't going to rap because it's illegal to rap yeah, in Iran. Yeah, like hip hop rap. is illegal there. You can't so, do it in Iran. It ain't no, happening. No, sir. No so, 21 Savage in Iran. Sorry. No, sir. Probably you know, not. No Kendrick. Probably nothing. won't happen. Yeah. And that's, and, and, but I'm saying they're, they're uh, resisting the monoculture. They're resisting the fact that like even if you don't con – so the U.S. or the West never has to go conquer anybody. But if McDonald's gets there and if Netflix gets there, then our culture – Culture will influence them and change their way of understanding the world so much they'll, they'll from inside will start demanding an American type government uh -huh. because of the fact that you change who they are and that's what I'm talking about using the heart for what hearts are for so I went over there to talk about Black Lives Matter stuff and to I was gonna do my stuff a cappella, and that's a long history that goes back to Paul Robeson and Harry Belafonte where America's pointing their finger at another country and saying y'all have human rights violations you're mistreating your people and it's like oh who are you talking to like, who are you to say anything about that? And so this is a tactic. And I took that on knowing that I, would, I was going to be, I was going to go to Iran and I was going to talk with a, a lot of black American leaders and also leaders from the diaspora. Like there are people there from Africa, Jamaica. And we were going to talk about this global reality. Um, what I didn't know is that they were going to ask me to rap with music and then record it and then put it on TV. That was done. I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And they put me on every TV station in Iran performing Uncle Sam Goddamn. So Harry Belafonte, uh, you know, a lot preserve him. He had a, a, a thing where, that, where Fidel Castro had a band against hip hop, too. Mm -hmm. And so he, Mr. Belafonte, worked with Castro and arranged for the Cuban rappers to come perform for him. But they knew that's what they were doing. And he said, just give them amnesty for this day. And see what they're doing and see if it doesn't change your mind. So they did, and they actually opened a program where people can rap now. So that's what they were doing, but they never checked with me about that. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And so I went over there, and I'm, I performed it at the hotel where I was staying. The other thing is that if I knew I was going to rap and if I knew I was going to be on TV, I would have checked in with the MCs there. Because yeah. there are MCs there, but they're, they have to be really underground because they'll go to jail. And some of them do go to jail. There's people yeah. been in jail 12 years for yeah. spitting to 16. Yeah. 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 For real. And like they may never be heard from again. And then there are people that have to move to, to Lebanon or to a, another country. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So that they can, uh, so that they can do their thing. I didn't check in with them because I, I wasn't planning on doing anything other than this conference. And so all they see now is this guy that they're looking at, there, who's this white man on TV rapping? And he's doing a song against America. Nothing happens on TV without government appro uh, uh, approval. involvement. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So somebody orchestrated this whole joint and I wasn't told about it. So I basically was in this situation where they started blowing up. My, they don't have uh, Twitter or Facebook, but they have Instagram. My last Instagram picture was a picture of me and Fashion. There's just the whole, like, 300 comments. I'm going to kill you. We're coming to, and we know where you are because the, the hotel where I'm staying was on the podium. It's yeah. right on the podium. You're at the Hotel Istiglal in Tehran. We're coming to kill you. Da, 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 da. Meanwhile, there's organizers from the event that are, like, serving me. So they have a key to my room. They check me in the room. They have keys to the room. So they found out I like mint tea. So they're, they're coming in every 20 minutes bringing me mint tea, just being beautiful uh -huh. Persian Iranians. You know what I'm saying? Shatori. Yeah. Yes. They're just coming in and bringing me stuff. Merci, merci. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're, you know what I'm saying? They're just trying to be good hosts. But there's strangers walking in my hotel room. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo. You paranoid. I don't right know now. who this is. Yeah. You know, so I was in a moment where I was like, okay, it's very realistic that I could die right now. It's wow. like, that's, it's not an idea. Like, this is a very real thing. Or go to prison. And if you go to prison for life, your life insurance doesn't kick in. Yeah. Who takes care of Tiff and the kids? If you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who takes care of them at that point? How'd you make it out? 
I believe that I made it out because I'm connected to a, a saint. Uh-huh. That's what I believe. Bro. But it was very difficult. I was in the airport. Your credit card doesn't work. So I just went to the airport trying to leave, but you can't leave on your own, and my credit card doesn't work, so I can't just buy a ticket home. Uh-huh. So I'm in the airport for three days with no money, no food. Like, I'm drinking tap water, and I'm, like, sleeping in the mosque at the airport just trying to figure out how to do it. And then finally somebody let me write an email to my wife and to Jay Bird, and Jay Bird actually got me out. Wow. Yeah. Jay Bird over at Rhyme says, yes, we got sound set coming up, too. This yeah. is Brother Ali. May 28th. What a powerful story. The The project is called All the Beauty in the Whole Life. May 5th is coming out. In this whole life, brother. It's coming out May 5th. We're going to play... We're going to play On Light with Hearts of Four, but I was hoping you could perform at least one song. I know yes, you got please. a new track. Yes, please. And, and what is it called? It's called Uncle Usi Taught Me. Uncle Lucy called? Talk uh, me? Uncle Usi Taught Me, yeah. Uncle Usi. Who's Uncle, Uncle Usi? Uncle Usi is one of my dear, beloved friends and mentors, uh, Usama Cannon. Mm-hmm. And he's from the Bay Area. You know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I had a place in Oakland for two years. Uh, you didn't you never invited me, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, actually, I did, actually, I texted you and I uh, didn't hear back from you. No, just, That's very likely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, man. So so I, I was out in the Bay for a few years, and, and he's, you know, my dear, beloved teacher and friend. Um, and this song is actually the story. Uh, the Uncle Usi taught me is actually the story of what happened in Iran. Okay, we got that mic set up over there for you, brother. And, okay. and we got Brother Ali here. You want to talk to him? 888-742-3345. Capone and Talent are here, too. They're going to join us momentarily. Brother Ali, yes. Sway the Morning, Shade 4 or 5, Own Light, with Hearts of 4. Woo! 888-742-3345, Orlando in New Mexico. What up, Orlando? What up, What up, Brother Ali? What's up, man? How are you? Good, man. Hey, I just wanted to say, dude, you talk about spitting the truth from the very beginning, man. That's all you've been about, and I love that. Talk about using what the heart is for, dude. Spread that love, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Hey, man, make sure you pick up that new album. Tell them when it's coming out. Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. Okay, make sure you get that. Pre-order it, all right? Pre-order it. All right, and then you'll be performing that sound set. That's coming up. That's right. Sold out already. Oh, May, shit. May 28th, Sway. Ah. Yeah, I'll be hosting. Have, it's not, not yet. Oh, we still got tickets left. They just opened up. I think VIP up. is sold out. VIP is sold out. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. I bought still, up all the tickets. Some tickets. <laughs> still some tickets. Get some tickets. <laughs> Go to Rhyme Sayers um, online. Rhymesayers.com. Soundset.com. Get them tickets. Soundset. It'll show. Uh, Mike, you just want to ask one quick question? Yeah, brother. I want to follow up with that conversation because clearly there were Iranians in the room. Um, and although it got leaked to television, it's clear that Iranians in the room. I'm just curious with that type of uh, message of that song, Goddamn the U.S., with Iranians being in the room, does that further propagate uh, the, uh, the, the anti America agenda that Iranians, a lot of Middle Easterns, feel towards the West in terms of the West influence of the East? And that is a propaganda that is used to recruit terrorist organizations against attacks here in America. So I'm just curious your thoughts on that specifically because they were in the room, although they got leaked to television, but there are Iranians in the room, it seems. Yes, sir. That's a beautiful question. Thank you so much. The best questions are the ones that challenge us, and I really appreciate that. Uh, you know, a lot of people just give easy questions, and uh, it, shows a, it shows a high regard for me for asking tough questions. I appreciate that. So, the, you know, actually, it's the flip. So actually, you know, uh, Iranian people or people that live in other countries, the same way that, that we in the U.S. are taught the Muslims hate you. When the reality is Dave Chappelle is a Muslim and Muhammad Ali is a Muslim and Tribe Called Quest are Muslims and Brother Ali is a Muslim. And you know what I'm saying? Like there are all these people in, that, are, that are cultural heroes to us and they're Muslim. So do these people hate us? Of course not. You know, and there are also uh, people all throughout the entire world that understand very, very keenly the difference between what the government is doing and who the people are. So when I was in Iran, 
uh, that was a conversation that I had. Before people knew I was Muslim, they would just see me and say, where are you from? And I'd say, I'm from America. And they said, thank you so much for visiting us. People wanted to take me to their house. People were like feeding me and not only like cooking food and giving it to me, but people are like feeding me with their hands. Like very, very beautiful people. And they say that we know that, that you don't, you're not told the truth in your country. And they know that we have CNN, MSNBC on the left and Fox News on the right. And they know that they're all owned by the same uh, cluster of corporations and they know that we're not given the right information about everything they know that about the people but what's interesting is that i when i was in iran they have this thing where they chant death to israel death to saudi arabia because a lot of people think that the muslims are just this like big group of people that all join together to hate america there are muslims that are, are at odds with each other uh, and then they also say death to England and death to America. So when I'm in this space and people say death to America, it's the first time I've ever felt like defensive about America because it feels like somebody's like your daddy beats y'all. And it's like, yeah, that's right. But you can't just say that. Mm uh hmm. Like, I was like, you have to, and I say in the song you hear in a second, you have to be more specific than that. Because when you say death to America, I'm thinking about y'all. Uh, yeah, your kids, you know what I'm your family. I, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I'm like, you have to be more specific than that. That's, that's, that's propaganda to say that. So one of the things that I learned from doing that is, um, you know, that, that when we you know, when we start to really travel and we start to see the world through other people's eyes, we learn more about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I start to think about all the times I've made uh, statements about entire groups of people. You know what I'm saying? And I start realizing that like there are there are people that that doesn't apply to. And I've wronged them by doing that. Yeah. So there's times where, you know, I'm like my family is white. I'm Albano. I was treated really bad by white folks when I was a little kid by some, but not by everybody. There were a lot of beautiful people. But so there were times as a teenager, I'd be like uh, these white people, da, 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 da. you know what I mean? And you start to realize like all of these beautiful people, like the ones that are showing up at mosque right now. You got people in Texas, show, white people showing up at mosque with big signs. We love you. We th you're welcome here. They got little kids, little white kids giving Muslim kids candy at the mosque. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Though, like so. These are the things that we learn. And ultimately, this is about me learning. I'm not claiming to have answers for anything. Uh -huh. But I've been taught so much. I've had so many beautiful experiences that you have to share them. And especially mm -hmm. if somebody gives you a mic, mm -hmm. and especially if you get to come and visit Sway's universe. That's right. You have to just share what you were told. Absolutely. If, if you don't have a mic, then you just shut up and you just keep learning and live your life. But if you have a mic, then, then you say what you learned. Can you share this new song with us? Yes, please. What's it called? Uncle Usi Taught Me. Uncle Usi Taught I've Me. I've never done it before. It's brand new. Okay. So if I make a mistake... Then, then I'm sure no judgment. Judge me free, brother. Yes, sir. Judge me free, man. Let's Matter walk fact, through it and see right, how it's Let's brother Ali, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uncle Lucy taught me. Mm. You can't teach what you don't know. The lyrics are in it. You can't lead where you don't go. Okay. Can't read what you don't so can't, can't fool the people. people. I'm just gonna rap with it like you they did in the me, 80s. I'm a globe traveler, soul ambassador, reporting live from the globe wide massacre. No mask for the truth that animates me. See it and I speak it wherever it takes me. I'm in the Republic of Iran at a conference, talking about the cops and their nonsense, and how they like to hunt black folk with no conscience. And now they wanna preach human rights is preposterous. Reports from the audience. Spit that Uncle Sam, goddamn, drawing out the round of applauses. I was rocking a cappella before this, because I know that rhyming in the rhyme is lawless. Oh shit. You know me though, anything for the people The clapping kind of tapped into my fat rapper ego I pulled it to my Mac, Mac and let the beat go Didn't know nobody would hear me though Here we go You can't teach what you don't know It can't lead where you don't go It can't reap what you don't sow Can't fool the people no more This is how it go mm. Can't teach what you don't know It can't speak what you don't grow I can't sleep what you don't so Can't fool the people no more This is how it go Friday, Friday we, we greet each other, each other at the mosque But here there's only one and the government preacher talks Which struck me as odd but Nothing could prepare me for A big ass mob shouting death to America It felt like somebody talking about my mom away It's all real but I'ma still feel some type of way You mean the system and I'm with you on that But you have to be more specific than that You ain't talking about the families getting whipped in the back I'm tripping cause I never felt defensive like that Okay so meanwhile, footage of me spitting these raps Is playing on every TV station they had They jail people for that The local rappers all start clapping back Death threats all in my social media apps Hmm. 
start looking at the people that brought me here like, what the hell y'all got me on, man? I'm out of here. Mm. Can't teach what you don't know. And can't lead where you don't go. And can't lead what you don't sow. Can't fool the people no more. It's very weird to rap with the lyrics. Uh. Can't teach what you don't know. And can't lead where you don't go. And can't reap what you don't sow. Can't fool the people no more. This is how it go. This that international gang banging in. My homeland hit I ran with the sanctions in. Cards and telephone ain't happening But I can't imagine a better land to be stranded in Cause almost everyone to see me coming Trying to take me home and they're trying to feed me something But I took the last $40 that I had And headed for the airport in the cab And there I sat Starving cause there's only one flight a day I can't even buy a ticket trying to find a way Somebody worked me from TV and recognized my face And let me write an email to my wife in the States Stuck in the airport three days Wonder if I'm even safe Till I got a seat on that plane Now imagine my exhausted embarrassment Got back to America They interrogate me like a terrorist Really? Can't reach what you don't know And can't lead where you don't go And can't reap what you don't sow Can't fool the people no more This is how it go can't teach what you don't know And can't lead where you don't go And can't reap what you don't sow Can't fool the people no more Uh-uh Brand Thank new, man. ladies and gentlemen Brother Ali, Uncle Usi taught me That's off the album All the Beauty in This Whole Life Available for pre-order Out May 5th You can see them performing at Soundset on May 28th Tickets still available at? Go to soundset.com, citizens. Get those tickets. We're going to be out in Minnesota. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sharing your, your journeys and your lessons with us. You guys are always so wonderful to me. I really appreciate it. Because you don't have to do that. You do that because of the who you are as people. And I really appreciate that very much. Oh, man. Look how you dressed up for us today, man. It's the least we can do. <laughs> you got our best and tie on, Mike. You, you, look, you look good. Thank you for enlightening <laughs> us. Because a lot of folks don't know what goes on around Absolutely. the world. And your firsthand experience is a learning lesson for all of us. And continue success. Stay the path. All right? We got your back. Yes, sir. Thank all you right, very much. Brother Thank Ali. You. It's Sway in the morning. Only. From Shade 45. Give